talking with words. Hey everybody, welcome back to Talking With Words. You're here with Rob, Ryan, James, and Sally. Oh, milk that shit for all it's worth, why don't you? <laughs> Tonight we're going to watch Terrifier, which is a low budget, what'd you say they did on this? 35000 35000 And it's a creepy clown that I fell in love with immediately, Art the Clown. It is described as, on Halloween night, Tara Hayes, maybe? I don't know. Finds herself as the obsession of a sadistic murderer known as Art the Clown. It's just fun. Low budget, bloody nastiness. Has anyone else seen this but me? No? Nope. nope. Sounds I know terrific. we've talked about it before, uh, Ryan. I know we've talked about it. Yeah, hadn't had a chance to watch it. This is it. Let's get uh, some parents guy going. <laughs> well. I'm going to have to cut every time you do like... <laughs> In this critically acclaimed movie that we're about to watch, did you just turn me down? The Parents Guide says sex and nudity is severe. Oh my. Yes. Very ah. interesting. Violence and gore is severe. Profanity, mm. though, we don't cuss a lot. We don't cuss a lot with all the stuff that's going on. Not a, a lot of, we're a lot of fucks fucking. Words and then yeah. alcohol, drugs, and smoking is very mild. Who has time? But frightening and intense scenes are severe with old Artie the Clown. He gets very artistic. Sticking to the point. I like it. Anything else before we begin? Nope. Cool. Let's get it. That was Terrifier. And... Oh, yuck. Terrifyingly glorious. Uh, Art the Clown earned his name. He is definitely a appreciation of art that I've never seen before. Yeah. It was very artistic. Uh, no, see, James, you still win. That's okay. I don't have another one in me. Give me give me 10. That's what she said. What he said. <laughs> 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 All right. Who wants to start this thing off? Because there's... There's a lot, but it's a pretty small film in itself. But they they do a lot with a little. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, and I fuck each other the rest of the night, or what? <laughs> I suppose I can start. You and I were talking about it right before James got here. The way the film opens, just the introduction to Art the Clown, paints a very good picture of what to expect the rest of the film. You're talking about the uh, like weapon montage when he's yes. creating all his shit. Yeah. Yeah, as he's going through, so they, they do that little news interview. Yep. One year post. I I must have momentarily not been paying attention to see the one year prior oh, note right. up on yep. the screen. Yep. But the girl with no face. Right. You Rick. know, when the, the they did that interview and then one year prior, but you see you see him kick the T V. Right. Like I said, maybe I wasn't paying great attention right there. Yeah. Potentially checking on the food order. <laughs> well, <laughs> which is fair <laughs> priorities. We yeah, did, we did need pizza. Yes, which is kind of but, a mix, that's kind of a mixed bag because, yes, they do have the you know, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers thing where he comes back at the end, but with the year prior opening, it could be either way. It could just be artistic license with him kicking the TV to to open up the to uh, transition time or whatever you right, want to call it. Yeah, and yeah. do and do the scroll and do the montage opening sequence yeah uh, as well as it could be him after all of this a year after right well the way he would kick the tv at that point is is weird to me because she did exactly what he would want her to do i would think yeah probably Kill people so let's talk about that part when the, the killing when the victim turns into the assailant got a little bit of stockholm syndrome kind of going on i guess if you haven't figured this out already spoilers and the sister that got her face eaten has the full circle from the beginning to the end where she's on the interview and she's talking about it. And then she ends up putting her thumbs through the reporter's eyes. After she stalks her in the dressing room and oh, overhears her she's, talking shit to her boyfriend she's about clear, yeah. how hideous the guest was. She's clearly been infected by art. Indeed. She's got some art inside of her. 
<laughs> well, art's got some of her inside of him for sure. She wants to express the art within her. Yes. Uh, mm. Mm, an art piece. But let me say, I mean, the, the, the training, the preparation montage was spot on because you can't just enact carnage on this level without some preparation. I mean, you're going to have to everything sharpened in advance. Very there true. were some very quick change skinnings. Yes. Yes. Uh, costume changes. Buffalo Bill style. There we go. More like Cheetah Bill. He was fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and then the backup gun, which it was refreshing to so, see a serial killer who normally depends on slashing to have a gun as a backup. Just get in there with it. And yeah. I mean, you got to cover all your bases. You know, it's, I, it's about time they they brought serial killers into the, the 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> I use, will say. Use some gunpowder. Come on. Well, the, the, the gun also sets it up for the end there of having the blank and the, the die pack and mm. all that other stuff. But well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I want to say though, I appreciate from the montage, every weapon we see him prep in the montage, we see him use later in the film at some point, which I do appreciate that. Yes. We, we see the homemade flay with the scalpels. We see the hammer. We see the hacksaw, all of it's used at some point. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> To, a to good effect. effect. There's a the, lot of murder. To maximum the, effect. The empty <laughs> syringe. Yeah. Yeah, the empty syringe. And this, this is not the first time around because as he's doing his montage prepping everything, everything already has dried blood on it. Yeah, he's been a busy boy. Yeah. He's been creating art for a while, it seems. At some point, I want to get back into the, the two girls leaving the Halloween party. In the least Halloween costumes ever. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and get to the uh, the opener of the actual film itself. The sexy uh, scarecrow. D and and sexy skeleton. Sexy skeleton. It was Dawn and Tara. Uh, D and Tara, I think is what it was. Was they it had Dawn? names? Dawn. Yeah. They just called her D as short. Yeah. It, it took IMDb me a while. says it was Dawn. It took me a while to find a name because they weren't telling each other's names well. around. I, I just love the fact they're leaving a party drunk, and then they have this, like, exchange about, oh, I can't drive. No, you drive. No, I'll drive. No, you can't drive. And then the one who says she's going to drive, uh, no, I really can't drive. Let's go get some pizza. I mean, that's a valid option. <laughs> but as it turns out, I mean, foreshadowing, if they just drove home drunk, they wouldn't have subjected either of them to anything that happened that night. Allegedly. See see what happens when you taunt the clown? And during that whole back and forth, they see Art with his bag walking past, and he just kind of disappears into the alley. And we still don't know what was in that plastic bag. Well, all the accoutrement for the killings. Because we saw that pile of them when he goes back and gets like that extra magazine later. You can't yeah. carry metal around in a plastic bag like that. It would drink, It would hang too. Well, it looked Ron like it Jeremy would argue otherwise. <laughs> It looked like it was like a leather pouch inside of a plastic bag when he put it on the floor and like all the stuff spilled out of it. Okay. That's just my take. It, it might, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was creepy. The, the plastic was bag, prepared. the plastic bag accessory was creepy and it didn't need to be explained to be creepy. Very true. So then we go to the, the pizza, the pizzeria, Ria, with wine and beer or whatever the liquor, yeah, p- pizza, beer, liquors. Yeah. Pizza. P- and, and it did say liquors. <laughs> and of, and of, of course, it's like an insanely Italian guy. Pizza uh, guy number one, you mean? Pizza guy number one. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I think see any liquor was, in that uh, store either. Steve. Yeah. yeah. Pizza guy one was Steve. Also, before they went up there, uh, she was like, give me the keys. I don't feel like dying tonight. <laughs> oh, that dumb bitch. And then <laughs> nobody cares about your feelings, kids. <laughs> So they go in and they're doing their little, you know, hooker. There's some word for all the Halloween costumes that are like. It's just Halloween costumes in girl world. Skimpy. Let's do that. <laughs> and then Art comes in and sits down across from him and just starts staring at Tara. Creepy. And never speaks. Yeah. The whole movie. First scene. He's not speaking. He keeps it up the whole movie. It was creepy as fuck. The way he never screamed, spoke. That is very inspirational. Used a, used a voice at all. C- clearly, uh, Nick Cage took some inspiration from this film. <laughs> With Willie's Wonderland? Yep. Which I did like the pizza scene a lot just because it established how creepy he was 
without him doing anything. He went and got the ring. He that one girl took the selfie with him, and he was not impressed. Yeah. Um, and then he went in the bathroom and smeared shit all over the walls. Apparently, a he was lot. a fecal artist. Yes. I don't know how somebody in a clown costume makes a mess that bad and doesn't walk out looking like the mess that he made. Well, he's a fecal filiac. Hooked on Prozac. Indeed. Then then Steve throws him out. and Get out of here. Yeah, well, he, he catches him, what, writing his name in well, shit? Well, the, the two wall? girls yeah. don't know what he did. I mean, the pizza guys, they later it's revealed what yeah. he did, but the two girls yeah. have no idea what he did. Yeah, we don't know until Aside from being later. creepy and proposing. Yeah. yeah. They, they when, just, when you know, you know. But <laughs> When he takes the, the quarter out of the tips from the table and uses it to buy a... Uh, Toy ring to give to Tara. <laughs> yeah. Those are some good little notes. I liked I liked all of that. It was just creepy enough without being like, I'm going to kill you in a minute. I mean, he was throwing the vibe out there, and, and Tara was picking it up. If only they'd been able to get away without, and, you know, the, waiting for the sister to come get them. Yeah. And, of course, Dawn thinks nothing's wrong in the entire time. She's like, and it's fine. It's a clown. The poor sister that they call. She had midterms the next day. Yeah, she had stuff to do. You can't be calling her to pick you up after your fun party that you drank too much at. I don't think she ever got to those midterms. I, I, I was going to say, uh, I, I need some closure on that. Yeah, not even a year later. Yeah. Did they, they, did they, they give her a take-home test? She could do it at the hospital? I mean, if she could see With it. With one eye? Yeah. They even said, like, as they were leaving the hospital, it's like, enjoy your interview tonight. The day she gets out of the hospital, she got an interview. Yeah. Man, she's a busy girl. Well, I mean, to do she, what? To on do what? The, the TV. No, to what was her job interview for? Yeah. It wasn't a job interview. No, no, no. It was the, an interview the on the TV news. Interview. Oh, 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 that interview. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. She, yeah, she was definitely qualified for that. But. She, she's got 12 months worth of rage built up. She's got to take it out on somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She got the job she interviewed mm-hmm. for, murdering people. Yeah. It's a sleepaway camp vibes. A little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll give it that. And then they go out, tires flat. Oh, boo hoo. Who could have possibly done this? <laughs> Not the clown. The clowns don't flatten. Why tires. would the clown have done it? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. And then we have the rat catcher, who's such a pleasant, pleasant man and lets them in, lets Tara in to go to the bathroom. Isn't that what she went for? She yeah. went in to go to the bathroom, but clearly the guy knew the state the pee. building was in when he let her in. And he escorts her. Into said bathroom, which is disgusting. So, yep. and then she has to like, okay, get out of here. I'm going to go to the bathroom now, which is why the only reason I wanted in this building. So I, I'm just going to throw this out there. I feel like in a multi-story building in the middle of the city, there's more than one nasty basement bathroom in there. You'd think so, right? And he took her to the... Nastiest bathroom, the farthest away from the exit. Well, I feel like the clown, I mean, Art chose this location as his home base. I don't know how he managed to lure the girls into there when really it was just a random choice that she needed to go to the bathroom that put the first one in. He was just an opportunist. He could have, he, could have been, you know. He, he did artist. He wasn't sure he was going to meet two uh, gullible young women that night and lure them into his lair, but he wasn't mad about it either. Well, technically, he only had to lure one in there. Mm, I'm sure chloroform was involved with the other. Yeah, he made up pretty well in the end and the beginning, I guess. Because let's talk about the pizza guys for a second. Yeah. they. Mm. Uh, she goes in to go to the bathroom, and then we cut back to um, Sad Pizza Boy clearing shit off the walls. That spells art. Yep. No one's paid enough for that job. <laughs> and uh, hey, he was on OT at that point. It's like <laughs> the shittiest day of does. And uh, <laughs> eleven twenty one sixteen. <laughs> uh, he comes out and he's bitching about Steve. You know, I'm running from Nicky D. And then we see the Steve O lantern because Steve's been beheaded and his face is now a jack o' lantern with it wasn't really candles. It was just on fire. Yeah. Right. That's what you get for roughing up a clown. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just trying to get him shut shit on the walls, really. <laughs> Steve was an innocent. <laughs> what, then, what clown doesn't know how to use poop to humorous effect? I mean, most clowns have like 47,000 handkerchiefs in their 
wrist. I mean, <laughs> why is he shitting on the walls? Come on. <laughs> Two ply, buddy. <laughs> and he sees, the, he sees the Steve lantern and, you know, Art pops up and he runs to get the phone. And as soon as he grabs the phone, takes his fingers Loses off. some fingers. Yep. Takes all the fingers off. So what I want to know is why he didn't immediately go for either that massive pizza cutter yeah. or the I know what the big pizza what you, I'm going to call it a pizza spatula and I'm 100% <laughs> positive that's yeah. wrong. Oh, oh, you mean the pizza shovel. Well, yeah. Well, well, once somebody cuts your fingers off, I mean, what's I, what's why are you holding back uh, I and not going full berserk on them? I would have gone for a weapon before I go for the phone. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's my ninja yeah, instinct. Uh, well, I mean but. that's I mean that's sort of the problem with every scary movie. Never, nobody ever thinks about picking up or using anything as a weapon when clearly you could. Which we'll get to Tara in a minute, but she was the only person in this that really had any foresight at all for the most part because she beat the hell out of him with a couple things and fought back pretty good. Her decision making wasn't stellar, but did better than everybody else. Well, I'll give her that much. Well, I mean. Not technically better than her sister, seeing as how her sister lived and she did not. But but did sister win by living? I don't know about that. She gained a new career. Oh. She did get a new job. I'll give it that much. So as she goes in to go pee, Dawn. 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 Is sitting in the car and she turns over and. Listening to AM radio. AM radio about the murders at the pizza place. And hey, did you know that the ambulance that drove by? That wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. It just happened, luckily, I at the same time. I didn't know that, but yeah. that's an interesting bit of trivia. Man, if only Sally was here to tell that bit of trivia <laughs> that she looked up. Just just like we the jack o' lantern the... that was CGI. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm I'm really impressed that she ha- she looked that up in the first place. Well, she really well, there's, knew. There's trivia on IMDb under the. She was looking it up guy. because she couldn't watch the movie. <laughs> she kept closing her eyes and looking down and. She just was looking that up like, oh, I'm looking up trivia because I don't want to see what's going to happen next, with which, with good reason. We'll get to that part. Yeah, that was fun trivia, though. And uh, <laughs> It's where David and I get all the trivia for these movies. Yeah. Not all, but. Turns, Art's there, grabs her, cut to black, and then I don't remember why, where Tara and him cross paths again, because then she runs so downstairs. She, so she comes out of the bathroom and is. Oh, that's right. He's just standing there. Yeah, because yeah. he, he uh, puts With the, the syringe in. So and she this, is, this is before all that. No, oh, yeah. So she gets out of the bathroom, and as she's getting ready to go back outside, she hears what I'm assuming is a cat meowing. Meow. And she... <laughs> That's it. She She's walking around through the garage shop, Not whatever that is. There, in the yeah, because yeah. Yeah, that's where the bathroom was. So she comes out, hears it. That's when she runs into the lady that assumes she's the new neighbor. Uh, yeah. Even though she doesn't technically live there because it's an office building and she's homeless in the basement, and it's currently uh, closed for fumigation of rats, right? Which as is she's talking, a baby doll, yeah, creating a baby doll, introducing it as is her child, and as they're kind of going back and forth, she's like, "We have a pretty new neighbor. We should do our laundry together." At this point, I think I she's affiliated with to. Art, not just a oh, innocent, think- crazy person in the rat-infested building. Well, you, you saw a connection there originally. Well, I yeah, I was I was waiting to see if there was one. Yeah, it didn't happen. But eh, she's just crazy. Not so much. But anyway, she she uh, Tara freaks out and she's like, "Oh well, uh, I need to find the landlord because that's logical at one a.m." Well, what do you tell the crazy person who wants to do laundry with you? I got to go see the landlord. Bye bye. It, was, it re- was a plausible excuse to use on your crazy lady. That's fair. Yeah. Once again, Tara being uh, wise, the world. Yeah, she's a little bit more intuitive than the rest of the group. But that's when she goes upstairs, goes to go out, and uh, Art is standing there, bloody scalpel in hand. Totally still. Shit-eating grin. Gingivitis eating grin. Yes, indeed. Uh, Brush your teeth, folks. (laughs) And the way he played with that shit. The mime mime work. They have been in there. (laughs) Walking billboard for floss floss regularly. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think Flossin's going to help at this point. <laughs> well, no. Once you go too far, once just start killing people. But that's when she just kind of freaks out and, all right, let's go back downstairs. Yeah, it makes a run for the uh, the basement the again. Garage. Hides behind the cars. The cars, that's right. Uh, looking under the cars for the feet. And I still don't understand how you lose track of somebody when you can see their feet Listen. below the car. You'd see yeah. where they went, if they walked off. I mean, they couldn't Any sneak direction. up on you. Yeah. 
So you keep your feet behind the tires. Exactly. And then somehow he got. Wow. You've never had to. You've never had to hide in a junkyard before. Why are you so good at this? (laughs) This is. Well, you see what had happened was. This is murder one hundred and one. Yeah. I. Yeah, I'm not steady where up. You, where were you in murder school? We're gonna have to desensitize James here pretty soon. <laughs> it's it's already started. <laughs> <laughs> but when she loses track, when she loses track of Art, I like that he's just like automatically behind her, stabbing her in the calf like three or four times. Really and that quick. sounded really. I mean, that should that should have like hurt a lot and prevented you from walking. Yeah, if not bleeding out. She had the pimp limp for a few steps. <laughs> she hobbled a little bit. Like, <laughs> she got about six steps up the, those stairs, and she she moved from a uh, slow limp to a light jog rather quickly. To which go is, find her rat friend. Yeah. Which, yeah, you're not running when you have a punctured calf muscle. Yeah. And then uh, she gets upstairs. She's yelling at him. He's got the he- headphones in. And then Art uses his magic syringe to... Uh, Knock her out. That's where we get one of the most fun scenes in the movie. Yay. <laughs> fun on a very strange curve. <laughs> Sally loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's uh, She did call it, though. So she wakes up, and, yeah. yep. uh, you know, She's Art's t- like, Tied oh, to the chair. Oh, you're all tied up. I mean, uh, duct tape around the ankles, duct tape arms to the chair, duct tape d- on t- the mouth. D- on the yep. mouth. Yep. And then Art's like, oh, here's my hatchet. I'm going to hit you with my hatchet and freaks her out. Flashes a couple tools and uh, a big does canvas. not actually hit her. But then the curtain opens. He, he pulls out his hacksaw. You've seen two. His hacksaw and he messes with her for a minute. Then he goes, oh, uh-huh. Does this little fan of white. Pulls down the sheet. And it's uh, her good friend Dawn. upside down. Just wearing black panties and nothing else. And uh, for now, for now. And of course, everyone thinks I already cut the tits off. That's nah. that's immediately what I thought was about to happen with the hacksaw. But wow. Nope. Way worse. Never let him know your next move. Yep. Grabs those panties, rips them off and just cuts her from tank to tip. And yeah. uh, <laughs> whew, it's a good one. I don't think there was enough screaming or blood in that scene, actually, to to justify what he did. There yeah, was plenty of blood. It was pretty rough. Also, he had to have gone around like the sternum and pelvis because otherwise that thing was sharp as shit. Because there's a lot of bone in there for the way and he that, went. That was that was it a, was a bone saw. Well, uh, <laughs> so I'll I'll say that that scene reminded me a little bit of Hostel Part Two. Mm. Uh, you know what scene I'm talking about? Huh? Another film Not I've Bone never Tomahawk? watched. No. <laughs> you seen Bone Tomahawk? Nope. Oh, well, same thing. Uh, she's uh, when that one lady. Is I know what you mean. Got her, got her tied up upside down. But instead, of, I don't. Know, Eli Roth didn't go into as much detail on that scene, but yeah. it it left a lot to the imagination. But she's got a just uh, somehow worse. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. What do you? Why can't no. I think of what it's called? What the Grim Reaper carries. A scythe. 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 There we go. Oh. Um, and she, yeah, this chick is basically chained naked upside down and scythe using a scythe to. Uh, no, she just oh, messes oh, with her and oh, cuts her. And I, I, I think she takes a nipple at some oh. point. Yeah. Um, but the the difference here is even though Art kind of plays in the blood a little bit and toys with the body a tad. Well, Art's on a time schedule tonight. This uh, this lady is. Uh, well, I mean, so is she. I think they get sixty minutes with the body. Yeah, you got to uh, pay for it. Uh, yeah, it was a in hostel. I, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure uh, the check she had to write for hostel uh, was more than the production value of our movie tonight. Absolutely, thirty k. Thirty. Well, but, hey, well, it was thirty five k. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> remember, Art was so invested in his hack sign that it allowed Tara Tara to break free. Yeah. She wants to break free. She used all that adrenaline to rip herself out of that chair. Yep. And uh, before Art could control her, she was on the move again. Which I also liked that Art got all the way to the skull, which is just that thick bone, and he couldn't finish it. Like, he got to the very end, and he was just like, ah, fuck it, and stopped. And then he turned around and saw that Tara was getting up, and 
he abandoned his project. You got to keep the oh, expectations look. realistic. I mean, if, if he made it through the rib cage and the sternum, uh, and somehow bypassed most of the spine, and then gets the. You know, that's what I'm you saying. Ju- he had you just got to go down one side of the spine. Yeah, he didn't go. He didn't go down straight down. He had to have gone around a little bit. He would have had to, yeah, and, yeah. but still, the rib cage. There's right. clearly the rib cage was yeah, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, little half half inch to the left or right. You're good to go. Maybe she had ribs like Matt Houston, and they're just made of jelly. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> they're so fragile. <laughs> you touch them and they just snap. <laughs> <laughs> Drink more milk. So much more. So she she smacks him a couple times. I think uh, she stabbed him in the back at that point. Uh, she did get a hit in, but I don't remember which blow she landed. So I think she had. I I think that first time when he stabbed her in the calf, I think that's when she got him in the back. Stabbed him in the back, maybe because then she runs off. So there, uh, she stabbed him in the armpit. That's what it was. Oh, that's right. Yep, in the in right in like the lat or the yeah yeah. yeah. Was that the scene where she's like? Get up, get up. So Just this is where that. she, when she escapes, he chases her. She knocks him down with that two by four. Back in the garage. Yep. And then she hits him a couple more times. And this is her biggest flaw, is screaming, get up, get up, get up. And he does. And then he shoots her. Surprise. I got a bag of tricks. I and was, one of them is a gun. I respected Rookie this mistake. clown for having a gun. He's got a backup. Yeah. yeah he did. He thought it I'll, through. I'll that was it, preparation. It was only a twenty-two. It did the job, though, didn't it? I mean, after he had to dig for another magazine. He didn't have a lot oh, of shots yeah, in there yeah. for some reason. <laughs> um, and it, it, he was clearly surprised when it stopped working on him. He yeah. ran out of bullets. Or, he had three rounds because he shot her in the leg, shot her in like the stomach, and then shot her in the cheek, and then it was empty. If it's the gun, I think it was. That thing only holds like eight or ten rounds. Well, then he went and got another magazine and shot her like six times in the face. Well, I mean, you see the second magazine he puts in, it's single stack capacity. Yeah. But he puts like seven or eight in there, which I don't understand because it's a twenty two. Yep. And those bullets are significantly smaller for than the forty five the gun is designed to be. Yep. But that's what happens when you buy a Remington nineteen eleven. I don't think the budget of this movie allowed for gun experts. To be consulted. <laughs> it was just one guy with a random gun. I was going to say, it looks like he stole his granddaddy's 1911. Good, yeah. good possibility. Yeah. <laughs> We've all um, been there. Also, right after that, or in the middle of this, he's, he pauses to take a murder selfie. Uh, yeah, I love that part. Uh, but we don't know where he sent it. Or if he sent it. it uh, just he was going to send it to Tara. Yeah, we th- well, we thought it was going to send it to Tara's sister. Or, yeah, Tara's she's, sister, sorry, she's Victoria. And he uh, he texts her back, like, hey, come around back. And then he pauses to take the murder selfie, which James well, coined the phrase murder selfie, which I'm going to use again. Yeah. Murder selfie, for sure. Make sure hashtag murder selfie when, you, uh, when we post this one. Uh, yes, there will definitely be a hashtag murder selfie. <laughs> I mean, he was just, he he was taking a play out of Don's book there, since Don made him take all those selfies that he didn't want to take he's gonna make her take one that she's not into not that Uh, she has a whole lot to say at that point you're right i didn't connect those immediately but yeah she was all about the selfies and yeah yeah, it seems like she taught him that (laughs) i'm gonna say that uh, that occurred to me just now as we're talking is i didn't even think about it but (laughs) i mean it makes sense one good selfie deserves another with her exactly uh, split open Head that wasn't quite finished. Oh yeah, that's oh. when he goes back to the uh, the the baby mama. Yeah, yeah. She was, she, she was witnessing so, this, and she's yeah. like, "Oh, yeah, yeah not my neighbor." He's standing over playing with terror or whatever, and that's when she strolls in, and she's like, "Oops, nope." And <laughs> he disappears for a while. We this see isn't him. where I parked my car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be going now. And he clubs a rat catcher in the head when he goes upstairs uh, looking for the sister. The weird thing is, is a crazy baby lady. She l- apparently lives in this building. Yeah. And she's unable to leave the building. I mean, she's homeless, so. I mean, it was almost like she was. Because all her stuff was in the corner in a storeroom I mean, in the basement. I mean, unless yeah. unless Art was really living there and had really prepped the location, she was the only one. 
besides potentially the, the exterminators that knew the layout of the building or knew why, knew where anything was, she should have been able to get out of the damn building. You think so. But Yeah, but it's just like Michael Myers. But she had to think up. she had to think about her baby. Well, and she had to go and uh so somehow she ran off without while leaving while running away from the from art. I well, mean yeah, a, she got to the point where she stumbled across him in the hall holding her baby doll and have you do you want uh, mother's touch and she cradles him while he sucks his thumb and that doesn't go great for her. You know, there was that that thirty seconds when she's consoling the guy that just murdered a handful of young females and like I I thought to myself, at this point I'm not sure which of these two is crazier. Well, uh, <laughs> the baby doll lady or the killer clown. Well, uh, it's interesting in that scene, you know, when he sucks his thumb. Remember, this is the nonverbal serial killer. Right. Um, the sucking the thumb was like a, a, you know, again, nonverbal communication about, you know, oh, um, you're 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 mothering me. I'm responding. But, you know, we also see all these creepy hand gestures from him throughout the movie. And my favorite is his little finger wave which happens multiple times yes. in the movie. It's yeah. Just, yeah. It's like, it's where's like the camera when we need it. It's like jazz fingers, but you know, upright and bloodier, very bloody and accompanied with like a, you know, the mime smile, the massive grin. Speaking of old teeth, bloody gingivitis and a, and a little, <laughs> a little finger wave. Yeah. What did he do to the, the sister that she's stuck and he's, Oh, she's just trying to get out. Yeah. And he just pulls a little jigsaw and, is riding around the clown bike, and then he just rides off into the darkness. It's like, well, shit. Do I go down there and try and get out that yeah. way, or what? Don't, <laughs> don't go in there. She's hiding, <laughs> pops back out, and the bike is tipped over, wheels spinning 100 miles an hour in the back, clown nowhere. He's quick. And then she, she kind of scampers sneaky. away, and you've got, like, this little hole that you can go into. You've got the, the door that's got the chain on it, and... Can of gasoline she, she chooses not to use. Yeah, the gasoline with the rats all over it. And she hangs out there just a little bit too long, and he comes up behind her, and you can tell this is Tara's sister because he puts the plastic over her face and he's suffocating her, and she has the wherewithal to rip the plastic off of her mouth so she it, can breathe. It took her a while. It did take her a minute. I mean, it had to have surprised her. A clown with a plastic bag attacking you. I mean, like, most of us aren't expecting that on a I, I mean, regular in my, basis. I mean, in my, in I mean, my you, mind, I'm just... You might with your I children, mean, but... Here, it happens all the time. <laughs> well, in, in my mind, I'm just screaming at her, like, why are you holding on to his hands? Just poke a hole in the plastic. Priorities. Breathe. And then she t- finds, like, a spike from a railroad. And yeah, just randomly yeah, laying like at, her, at, her, at her fingertips. Yeah, and puts it in Art's foot, and he's, once again... Opens his mouth to silently scream, and as she runs away, he just gives her a really angry <laughs> he <laughs> flips her, her off. the finger, flips her the bird. Yeah, <laughs> he's still nonverbal. He's been he's been injured again, and uh, he can't can't make a sound. He just flips her off, <laughs> and it, it's she doesn't even see it. She's running away. So yeah. it's it's just it's just it's just him being me. It's just our movie people that are watching it. They're like witnessing this flipping <laughs> the bird part. It's, it's definitely just his character and us. Yeah, glad glad he maintained that uh, little sense of humor there. Oh, it was that was great. Well, I kind of wanted to see him do the uh, Friends, Ross and Rachel, yeah, <laughs> yeah. double double fists. <laughs> you know, I, I would have laughed harder if that had been the case. But you know, the bird was still good. Yeah, yeah. And let's see, she she's running, she's trying to get away. The rat catcher is a backup. Uh, he's still alive. He's trying to help her when Art comes around and. I don't know what he clocks him with. Maybe it was the chemical bottle that was supposed to be killing the rats. So he he hits the clown. Yeah. Well, he yeah, hits well, him. He, they run. He hits him. They run off. They call nine one one. You know, as per policy, stay here. Yep. Stay on the phone. Don't go anywhere. Stay here. Stay on the phone with me till and the, cops get there. He's like, screw this. We're out of here. And they they slams the phone down and walks out the other side of the room. And it's always so frustrating how they do this shell game things like. Well, they're walking. They're walking away. They're walking back, and then all of a sudden, they're they're looking at each other. They're both looking away from each other, and as soon as everyone's looking away from the other one, and the one's got his back turned from everything else, pop goes the clown. Yep, and that's when he hits him with that large canister of let's rodent just, spray let's just say or whatever. rat spray. Yeah, yeah, and then proceeds to stomp his face into jelly. 
He got monkey stomped. All I know is if you've got a partner in a serial killer situation, you guys should be back-to-back, eyes on all sides, ready. They definitely weren't prepared. I have I have notes for how to live through this that they should have followed. Just like in an old people orgy. Back-to-back, <laughs> you cover each other's asses. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's back against the wall. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> you have some experience there, James? Uh, No. <laughs> Part two coming soon. Why would I put my back against the wall? <laughs> <laughs> I came to play. So <laughs> put yourself stomps. in a uh, nuts to butts situation. There. <laughs> Rat catcher stomps his Rat gets catcher. His face stomped in, and uh, she runs. She gets out, then goes into another door that says "keep out." No, she. So she was trying to break out right there. And she finds a pipe, and instead of hitting Art, she starts hitting the lock. Right. And that's when, of course... Just telegraphs like, that she's in there, first off. Yeah, like James said, doesn't look behind her, doesn't not paying attention to anything else, and he comes up behind her right as she gets the lock open. That's when she stabs him in the eye. That's the eye. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's the eye. Then she gets out of the building, goes around, and goes into the next part, like the parking garage part of the building. He grabs her hair. And then when she gets away, he reaches his arm all the way in with a still a, still a lump of hair with a lump of hair and a bicycle horn like uh, just I that that one last <laughs> clown joke. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be honest; I'd have been disappointed had he not utilized the horn <laughs> in the film. At that point, I wanted him to be wearing big shoes. <laughs> I mean, he he definitely nailed that. And then she she hid. You hear the cops coming in. She goes to look out, and he drives the truck through the door, smashing into her. I guess she's unconscious at this point. I yeah. sure hope so. Because when the cops come around the corner, he's... She got hit by a Chevy, so... He, he's eating most of her face, or at least has already eaten most of her face off. Went, went for the eyeball. Yeah. yeah. Also, he was really enjoying the music that was in the truck. He took a minute to. There was a sound. Some I messed don't know what up song jazz. it was, but it, it was yeah. like jazz. And he was just. It sounded, just, a, yeah, a combination of jazz and something else. Like uh, driving to ba- it. Bad jazz. What, whatever Exterminator 2 had been listening to in his truck. Yeah. And he was loving it. Then which, he got to uh, eat some face. Which, which, based off his character, wouldn't have pegged him for a jazz guy. <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> More like Circus Soleil. Well, I, yeah. I mentioned the jazz fingers earlier. I mean, yeah, that's true. He's got a fan of keep jazz the fingers. You know, the cops cops show up, show me your hands, and he either, and this is, you said that you think he used a blank. So, and and I'm going to explain why. Go ahead. So, he went back after he emptied the second clip into her. There there was an, another spot where he's messing around with his uh, bag of goodies, grabs the gun again, swaps out the magazine, and then we don't see it. He pulls it out of his shoe when the cops are pulling. He puts it in his, in his mouth and gives them the, impre- you know, Pulls the trigger, gives him the impression that right, the which, fake death. Yeah, and when I see when I think about it, with all the lights flickering and everything, I'm thinking it's coming back it's to life, coming back, and it's it's one of those like, oh, the devil really enjoys what you're doing. Get another, get to go again. So yeah, there's no other way to correlate the lights flickering with you know him faking his death. He couldn't have planned that. No luck on his part, but he's a he was supernatural lucky. killer clown. Yeah, pretty lucky. I mean, he had several injuries and didn't. But anyways, when you see him sit up after he chokes the corner, there is a you don't see a hole in the back of his head. You see, a but thing you do see off. a wire and something hanging out, which is a blood spatter that you can magic store, movie prop, whatever. They're sure, not sure. They're not too difficult to make. And you know him being a clown, surely he can devise some sort of trigger vice to set that thing yeah. off. I mean. If it was fake, a so, blood squib is not out of his. Uh, so right, so a good and so he a, he a good clown with some magic that. tricks could have faked yeah. it. All, all you got to do is throw some blanks on the gun. Good point. The the pressure on it, while it, it would have hurt, it definitely would have knocked you out. Because I mean, a, a blank is still dangerous. I had yeah. one explode on me yeah. one time, and they are not pleasant. Yeah, they oh, hurt. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they hurt yeah. a lot. They kill people. People have died from blanks. Yeah, unless you're uh, what's his face? Those weren't blanks. Brandon Lee, no. Oh, the, Alec Baldwin. Oh, Alec Baldwin. oh yeah, that yeah, that was oh. live. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Oh, don't get me but, started. Anywho, don't get me started. 
Yeah, that's that's just poor gun safety. This is true. Yeah, um, but it it theoretically had it had it not killed him, which it was a twenty two, so maybe not. Uh, but it definitely would have knocked him out. Yeah, pressure and, that. Yeah, easily for didn't kill him, but the fact that the back of his head was intact when he sat up, and there was just that little pouch looking thing dangling off. That was the big cue that tells me he had this plan because. He's not done playing games yet. I guess we'll see in Terrifier 2. And Art is I, smart. Yeah. Oh, man. W- without that move, would there be a Terrifier 2? Right. To he's, terif- he's thinking sequel here. Terrifier. It's not Terrifier 2, son of art. It's Terrifier 2. I thought I had something. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, now, we watched this. I don't know what network this was on. I forgot already. But... With ads. <laughs> we had ads, and <laughs> holy shit, the ads were perfect for every pause. There were, like, what, five of them, maybe? Uh, yeah, five or I six, think so. Yeah. And I think the one that stood out the most was the cops are screaming at Art, put your hands up, put your hands up. He ate her face, and it pauses, and it says something about how La- great this ice cream Lactose tastes. Lactose-free <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and the, every ad. Ha- like, take it, a bite. I don't know if it was supposed to be a joke or if it was just great uh, combination of the two. I just wanted to end every one of those commercials with, I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> just pull a RoboCop. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was, felt like it was uh, part of, I mean, not knowing that we we're going to watch it with ads, uh, when they just popped up, it was like every time it was kind of like, oh, yeah, we're still watching ads. And yeah. it, was like, uh, it, it felt like part of the movie, to be honest, the way we were watching it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just like when they're doing a season finale or something, they time the commercials perfect. It, I mean, it was gold. Like, I don't want to watch it the other way now. I mean, yeah. they they clearly it, it clearly there were not planned commercial breaks. It was just like some time interval. Oh, this movie is X long, so and we need this many Divide commercials. It. So it was it was kind of you know pseudo random that which scene it was going to pop up in and what ads were going to show. But every one of them, yeah, you're right. It, it was, was just, phenomenal. It was just wrong for it the were, movie. And it was cartoon and so like right. serial jumping around. <laughs> uh, it was so good. <laughs> I loved it. I loved every ad in this movie. Yeah, so if you have the option of watching a scary movie with ads, go with ads. Give it a shot. Yeah. So uh, I I feel like we skipped a a key piece of this. Which one? So after we cut away from uh, the crazy cat lady consoling, as I'm pondering which one of these two is crazier, it cuts back to the sister when the sister finally comes in after, you know, she finally makes it in the building, and she finds what she thinks is her sister under a blanket. And that's when he followed through with uh oh shit yeah bar, borrowing a pair of uh breasticles he, there he does his Buffalo Bill impersonation and pulls his Buffalo Bill impersonation half, half Buffalo Bill yeah torso yeah. only yeah yeah definitely because it was it was really just like sternum to shoulders it was really just yep. the the breast and shoulders that and he took the hair yeah he took the hair. He stripped down totally out of his clown costume yeah. <laughs> with the exception of his clown mask. And I'm like 98% sure he left his Shaquille O'Neal size 23s on and I think he was for that take gloves. as well. And he had his uh, finger mittens on there. Yeah. Would you say shoulder to torso? Yeah, about that. Because it was, it was, like, it was. The, like James even, I think you're the one who said like, oh, that's his uh, stomach How, underneath uh, yeah, well, well, I, well, I was. I what was, if I said, how do he have time to cut to, the hole? Yeah, I was about to yeah. impress that. How was he? How was he able to skin a corpse and have time to get back from one place to another, and and dress up and cover up and and get all that done in time for the sister to find him? Um, but mm. you know, he just tied on the top part. The, the magic of movies, you and, know. And when we didn't, you know, his first victim. Well, his first female victim. We automatically assume he's taking the tits. And he does not. I mean, I have a hard time making four. four. We assume we're finding the sister, and it's him with a different pair of tits he did decide to take. Yes, this is true. Uh, just just try timing four entrees to be done at the same time for dinner, and then compare that to <laughs> the serial killer's amazing choreography and orchestration of, of a whole night of terror of all the things that they were able, to, he was able to accomplish during this, and 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 pause for dramatic effect for every person showing up. And like Ryan said, this is this wasn't his first rodeo. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. He'd, he'd been he'd, he'd done this the, before. The, the preparation montage definitely said something about this. He was this, clearly a this chef. killer. He knows what he's doing. He's he's ready. Yeah, I can I can tell you with that skill there that that he's showing off. Uh, it's definitely making me think twice about my life and how <laughs> underaccomplished I've been. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to start killing people. Apparently, jeez. Just uh. get just get the turkey, the dressing, and the green beans done. That's at one time. You'll be halfway there. Yeah, yeah, I've always got something. Not quite ready. <laughs> Usually it's the older people. I think they die faster, but they die slower for some reason. Oh, we're doing food metaphors. Sorry. Um, Are we nearing the, a black hole? It's the marshmallow cell. I don't know. It's because you're not basting them enough. They dry out too quick. See, I thought that too, but I tried it the other way. These people are resilient. I think it's the, uh, you know, the old timers thing. They don't want to go yet. But uh, <laughs> staying strong. They're, they're, man, they're Hold, holding on for one last holiday meal. Grizzly. As much as they love church, they don't want to die. True grit. They definitely have some true grit, and they taste gritty. <laughs> Did we miss anything else? <laughs> well, yeah, technically no people. Nobody was eaten. Well, the, except for us, some no. eyeballs. There some, was a face, face Yeah, there's some face. A face yeah. got eaten. I like how the majority of the cast that was in there, because uh, we were joking about it, you know, the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie, how there's only like seven people in the whole film. Yeah. It felt like it. And, and, then, it, and a few well, and that, people kept showing up, but... Early on, it was very limited on who you saw. That's on how screen. it started, and I was scrolling through. I'm like, wait a minute, there's like 35 cast members here. Yeah, and the bulk of the cast all showed up the last six minutes of the film. Yeah, you had the cops, uh, you had the coroners, you had uh, yeah, all of that. You know, the 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 one year later yeah. reveal at the hospital. I, I gotta say, as as clown horror goes, this was a little more comedic than other stuff I've seen. Oh yeah. Um, were you not here for Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Um, I was not. Oh, but you, you were just here for it. I was you? just here for it, which is what I'm thinking of this week. Yeah. Um, there Bill, were, Bill Skarsgård did not have the same level of humor. I mean, there was some humor in in, in his kills and, or his appearances, but not like art. Art uh, took it to a new, a new level. It's an art form. I Fuck yeah, it is. I didn't see Killer Clowns. I did see the Killer Llama. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a don't you mean Lamageddon? Ah, uh, thank you, Lamageddon. Yeah. yeah, not to be confused yeah. with black sheep. <laughs> Nor could we. All right, that's all my notes. You guys got anything else? Uh, nope. Buffalo Bill was the last one I had there. Buffalo Bill yeah. and uh, giving him the finger. Hashtag murder selfie. Yeah, which was his greatest <laughs> move of all. <laughs> James, you got anything else? Nope. I mean, or without words, it's it was it was delightful. I'm ready for the second one. We're going to do the second one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the second one now. We'll do that when it comes out. Well, that was Terrifier, part one. Uh, thanks for listening. Talking with words. Listen to us everywhere. You know, you know the drill. We'll, uh, I don't know, we'll post more. Are we recording?